So we're going this morning, 1505 River Road. Verify the address, start my pre-trip, load information required. I gotta write this stuff down. Enter load information, 21086. Seven six trailer required one eight two change pre trip inspection pre trip inspection we ain't gonna certify just yet just in case I made some mistakes yesterday yeah yesterday yesterday I came to the truck stop cause you know we got a fuel shortage I don't know I zoom in but I don't know how close I can get but if you see we got one two three four five the five pumps on the right side are all closed so they only have one two three four pumps open they got five on that side but the immediate pump all the way on the left is for um what they call it um vehicles that use diesel but not like not big trucks they got like a clearance thing like like if you was driving an rv or a car or something like that pickup truck you can get that's for that's for, that's that lane but this truck stop man it's been backed up it was backed up all last week with uh you know we got a fuel shortage so i got my fuel yesterday on sunday i came to the truck just to uh check some stuff out i actually came to look at my load information came to look at it transflow app was acting up so when i got here yesterday it wasn't that many trucks in line so i uh i said uh let me go ahead and get some fuel in this damn truck so i wouldn't have to waste my time doing it this morning also check my oil and all that stuff too check my oil check for leaks make sure i had some cooling in here Whew. let me show y'all what i got beside me right here i don't know i don't know where this guy at let me show you what i got beside me look what we got here pns a blue truck as y'all can see i am empty i wonder how this bungee ended up right here I wonder how this happened not sure but every time i come back to this pilot i always make sure I always check make sure i still got all my chains and my binders and all that stuff because if y'all notice i don't park at the same truck stop anymore i used to park at that mom and pop um not far from my house but about a month ago the owner the owner closed it down no more truck parking so now he said hey trucks was trucks was uh leaving too much trash out there and people were leaving trailers and because it was starting to fill up with a bunch of driving trailers somebody had a, a reefer trailer i think it was spaghetti sauce that went bad and whoever had it they just they just dumped all the spaghetti sauce on the ground and so uh after that they closed it down so now i gotta park at the pilot i like the other truck stop better because it was walking distance from my house now i gotta park here at the damn pilot but uh, it's all good like i said every, every but the other guy told me he was like you know you gotta watch the truck out here because stuff will come up missing so every time i do my pre-trip i always walk around and make sure i still got all my equipment because i would hate to come back over here and my stuff be gone this bungee might have just fell it might have just fell down i don't know how it fell way over there but it fell so i'm gonna sit this right here because i'm about to use this dunnage in a little bit anyway just sit it right there i probably have to talk the load i'm not sure my dispatcher told me you know you never know if you got to talk until you get there and they tell you must be tarped or whatever i got what's today monday tuesday wednesday two more days to my vacation i'm going to las vegas on thursday if i didn't tell y'all before but yeah i'm going on vacation game your boy need a break your boy need a break Break. and it's a time off so let's go ahead and finish this pre-trip and we're gonna start we're gonna start riding tug test let's, let's hit this tug test real quick oh yeah we ain't going nowhere let's get it gang let's get it If you look to your right, we have the Saddler Travel Plaza. Exit 75, Interstate 95, North Carolina. Done North Carolina to be exact, if you love pilot. If you're more of a loves man, you can go to exit 77, two miles down the street. I'm a pilot man myself, mainly because that's what I hit the most pilots. 
gonna bust a quick left turn and hop on 95 northbound. They had an accident up here yesterday when I came to check my truck out right on the bridge. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it involved a, a four-wheeler, not a, not an actual four-wheeler, but a car, like a little SUV and a drive-in truck. Well, nothing too bad. They probably just tried to probably tried to merge at the same. Well, if I could if I could take a guess, when you coming off the off the ramp going northbound coming to this truck stop you about to see the same bridge up here that i about to cross it's kind of hard to see to your left what's coming over that bridge until you actually get up and get up in the road so i'm assuming that's what happened that's what i'm assuming the same bridge right here if you're coming off that exit to the right it's kind of uh kind of hard to see what's on the bridge so you got to be real careful when you're making that left here we go gang here we go cofield north carolina here we come all clear to the left. Let's go ahead and merge. Thank you, White Chevy, for moving over for me, Mr. White Chevy. Let me go ahead and move over right here for this guy. Safety first. Then I'm going to get right back over. All righty then. Let's, let's hit, head to Cofield. Sucks to be him. Ain't got time for no speeding ticket. 17 miles to go, gang. 17 miles. 17 miles. My appointment time was from 11 to 11.30. It's 10.28, 17 miles away. Y'all think I'll make it? Hey, one thing I learned about this place, though, from this is the third time I've been, but one thing I learned, it's pretty much first come, first serve. Because last week, I had a 12.30 to 1 o'clock appointment. I got there at 11.30. As soon as I got there, they loaded me as soon as I got there. I ain't even had, I barely had time to check in. As soon as I pulled up, and y'all remember the last video, as soon as I pulled up, the guy was telling me to pull my truck up, and I was like, hey, I ain't even checked in yet. And he was like, well, pull up first, then go check in. As soon as I came back to my truck from checking in, forklift driver pulled up, told me to pull up the hill. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be the same way today. country enough for y'all right here could y'all actually imagine living out here in the country like this some people love it some people love it don't get me wrong i love the country too but me personally i gotta live somewhere where a walmart is not far away walmart Lowe's, stuff like that i like to do a little shopping on the weekends and pick up something that i might need i wouldn't want to drive have to drive an hour to go to walmart to grab something another thing too with being a truck driver if you don't have like a, a dedicated like a dedicated run that you that's going to get you home like if you if you had a dedicated account out of new out of Nucor where i'm going right now and you lived out in this area you wouldn't be so bad but you know if you didn't have like like me i could go home and be an hour or two from dropping a load off at any given time that's why i go home so much because you know i live right off where 95 and 40 intersect i only live about five miles from that intersection so anywhere in north carolina you know raleigh charlotte Greensboro, Wilmington, Fayetteville, like places like that. You know, if I got to drop off or pick up there, I can always get home easily. But living somewhere like this, unless you got a dedicated account, it, it would be kind of kind of hard for you to get home quite often. Let me go ahead and slow down so I can bust this right turn. I'm not sure what load I'm picking up at, but third time I've been here, every time, the other two times I came, Tennessee Steel Haulers. The Board Brothers Yard is right down the road. Hey, there's that safety guy right there. The one I was just talking about. You park in the wrong spot, he gonna get you. Let me go in here and check in. Made it to the loading area. There's this guy looking around, looking for my place. All right, gotta back up. Guess we're close enough.
this is what we ended up with. Took two forklifts to pick it up. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the X, X chains on the front first. Then we're gonna put the straps. X chains first, then the straps. flatbed game history that's the first time y'all ever seen me do an ex exchange keep this little wood off they always leave this stuff up here i'm only gonna put one chain on the back i'm only gonna do one on the back but i always put the x in the front that's flat still Sometimes my ratchet binders get stuck. This is what I use. This is what I use to unstick them. I got this at a job site about two years ago. Ever since then, I held on to it. I guess you could call it my lucky pipe wrench. Y'all know what time it is. Strap time. Strap time, baby. <laughs> Look at 
We're gonna use eight straps. And guess what? I still don't know if I got a tarp load or not. It's not on my paperwork. I get the paperwork when I get back up there. But I'm just gonna assume, just gonna assume that I don't got a tarp. I'm gonna throw the strap over those tarps. We're just gonna assume that we don't have to tarp it. Boy. Yeah, we're just gonna assume that we don't have to tarp it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Y'all see, I'm taking out way more strap than I actually need. Let's cause some rushing. I tell you what, it's better to have more strap than less strap. That saves some time. Then you, then you don't gotta walk back on the other side of the trailer cause you ain't got enough strap. One more strap. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. One more, baby. So we got eight straps on this load. Eight straps and three chains. Got the one in the got the one in the back right there. And we got two on the front. I mean you can use. I'm not sure how much by the book it's supposed to be. I mean, you can use two in the back, but you got a better chance of the load going forward than you do backwards. And we can minimize the load going forward even more by utilizing the Smith system and not slamming on brakes and stuff like that. Slamming on brakes, following too close, all that stuff right there help minimize that. I mean, but of course, stuff happens. Can't control everything, but we can't worry about that. We're just gonna worry about what we can control. You know how I was just telling y'all, how I was just telling y'all about all that extra strap for throwing it over. We got a trick for that. My trusty strap winder. We got a trick for that, baby. My trusty strap winder. Rolls them up a lot quicker. Rolls them up a lot quicker than doing it by hand. Let's go ahead and pull both of these. Go ahead and pull both of these bad boys. Three of them. My trusty strap winder. I'd rather have more strap than less. Then when I do roll it up, I got my trusty strap winder. Oh, look like we got a PNS over there. Woo. One more step, gang, one more step, one more step. We got eight straps, so that means 16 inch tips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for this side, we'll come back and get the other side. Tell you what, this load better not be no damn tarp load. You see all that mud on the load from been sitting outside? Better not be no damn, better not be no damn tarp load. By the time we hit that gate, we out of here. Oh, I had one extra strap extra tip. I can't count. <laughs> I thought I was counting eight. I actually had nine. Let's make sure I don't miss one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, your boy can't count. Can't count one for damn. I have one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight this time. It's a, and it's the same with edge protectors. You'd rather have more than less, especially when you gotta get on top of a load. Then you be like, damn, why didn't I grab some extra? Where's the Tennessee steel hauler? I gotta hurry up and get them back here. These other trucks gotta get loaded. I'm gonna hit a couple pulls on this, on these, and I'm gonna get up, get up to the staging area so I can get out that way. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tighten up one strap. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tighten up two. I'm gonna get up out of here. Hey, come on there. You see what I got on my helmet? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> uh, Ain't you pulling mine out? Oh, yeah. What is one here? Um, Charlotte? Hey, how you know me? You seen that field recruiter? <laughs> Hey, I thought you get preloads. Nah, I don't know what they got going on. Oh, okay. Hey, I normally wouldn't do all that since I was recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna drop this off in the morning and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm on vacation. Oh yeah. Where you hit? Oh, okay. Shit, bro. That place I went to last week, I ain't never been there. That shit was in the middle of nowhere. 
Brookville. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Brookville. You been there? I've been there all three times. Oh. Yeah, fuck that place. Oh, you in there? All right, bro. I got a wild loop. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Ah, all right, bro. That's my buddy McKinley. I went ahead and tightened up all the straps. Might as well. Uh, might as well, baby. Might as well. Two more, two more. to my buddy. Last strap right there. Woo. Last strap. Let's check my straps. Check my straps. We almost out of here. Oh, a little more. Hey, hey. Hey. Hey, what you say, buddy? What you say? Y'all know why I'm tapping these straps. Oh, guitar. Guitar. Woo! Always tap your straps. And make sure you say, that motherfucker ain't going nowhere. Oh, oh, I forgot kids watching. We're gonna say, that thing ain't going nowhere. Woo! We're done, man. I gotta get up here and close all this stuff up, tighten up my dunnage, and we're gonna be out. All done, gang. Y'all love Lowe's camera. You always get driving videos. Got some Lowe's camera today. Look at my buddy over there. Look at my buddy, McKinley. Working hard. You work harder than me. All right, gang, we out. Let's get this paperwork so we can hit the road. Flatbed gang.